So last week we talked about why blogging is important and the benefits of actually doing it, but today we're going to talk about how do you actually make it happen. What are the steps you have to take practically to actually create a blog post? We're going to do that, break it down in today's video. Hey there, I'm Caitlin. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This is a place where we love to empower photographers to build both profitable and purposeful businesses while also letting you into the behind the scenes of our everyday life. Today I'm talking about blogging the actual steps to make it actually happen. So in my business, I have a 48 hour workflow that I have been doing for almost 13 years now. And so basically when I photograph a wedding on a Saturday, it is blogged on Tuesday morning. Sometimes it's a little later in the day. I have three kids now, but it is blogged on Tuesday. And that is something that I stick to no matter what, because it has such great benefits. Now, so today it's kind of high level. I'm going to show you the basic steps that I take, the order in which I take them, the programs I use to make a blog post happen. There are a lot of things that have to come together to make a seamless system. Um, you have to be an efficient editor. You have to understand the process of curation so that a wedding that maybe wasn't that great can look amazing on a blog. There's a lot that goes in to really, really great blogging. And so if you want to learn that, if you want to learn more than just the basic steps of I do this, this, and this, and you actually want to learn how to be efficient and really well trained in some of the other areas like editing, curating, structuring your workflow, the KJ consistency course is going to teach you all of those things. That is my consistency course that talks about editing, but also talks about workflow. The reason why this course is amazing is because Consistency is not just about, do my skin tones all look the same? It's about, can I create the same marketing strategy over and over again, week after week, so that I become known for how great I am to work with. So I become known for, wow, your images are really consistent, but man, she always has her work out into the world for vendors to use, for clients to ooh and all over, to use on social media 48 hours after she shoots the wedding. I've built a whole business on this strategy. So the KJ consistency course will teach you all of that. But if you just want the basics, keep watching. This is what we're going to dive into first. When we first filmed all this, we thought, oh, this is going to be one great video about blogging, but it was way too long. And so we broke it into two sections. So last week was all about the reasons why this week is about practically how to make it happen. So we're going to go right into that clip right now. Roll the clip, Ty. All right. So talking about my process. First step to this whole blogging process is the culling process. So what does it mean to cull? It means to take all the images that you shot and you need to go through them and select the ones you're actually going to keep. There's actually a video that I've made previously. We can link it below um, where I teach you how to cull in 24 hours, some tips, tips and tricks to make it a lot faster. Um, so you want to cull the wedding first. I like to call backwards to forward. So start reception and go backwards to details. There's a lot of reasons why it's in that other video. Call the blog images second. So after you call the whole wedding, you're saying, okay, these are the images that I want to deliver in the full gallery, import those into Lightroom. And then I select the images in Lightroom. I label them green, the ones that I want to blog in the actual blog post. Um, so do you have to label them green? No, you can label, label them any color you want. You could star them, but I do that process in Lightroom. Um, and there are some other reasons for that, that I share uh, in that other video as well. So then the next step, Next up is to edit images that are just for the blog. I'm not editing for the whole gallery. Common mistake a lot of photographers make. They think I got to get this whole wedding edited and then I'll blog it. That is the biggest time suck and bottleneck that I ever hear from photographers who say, I just can't make time for blogging. If you reversed your whole mindset and you blogged strategically a few images throughout the entire uh, collection of images from the day, then think about it. You could go back and just sync to those edits when you're doing the whole full gallery edit. But a lot of people don't think like that. They think I got to edit it all and then I'll blog. So try to reverse your mindset if that's one of the things that's holding you up. So if you really struggle with editing and it's taking you too long or you can't seem to edit consistently, the consistency course would be amazing, but maybe you're not right at that level. You're ready to try the KJ preset process instead, which is a more affordable editing resource. That's actually my take on presets that combines the power of presets and profiles into four easy steps that allows photographers over 4,000 of them um, are using this process in their editing workflow. So if you want more information about that, there is a link below under this video to learn more about the KJ preset process. So once you are editing these images, now it's time to export these images. And I actually export them at their normal size that I would for their full gallery. So I export at 4,000 by 4,000 pixels, pixels uh, at 300 DPI. And then the next step is to blog stomp them. So why do I blog stomp them? Why do I take these these images, put them into the program called blog stomp. Well, because stomping these images through blog stomp is basically resizing them, adding a little bit of sharpening, and it allows me to pair vertical images together. 
the artistic and creative side of this process is that this is when I'm looking and I'm visualizing how my blog flow, blog flow is going to look. I'm going to have some details paired together. I'm not going to do a ton of paired verticals. I'm going to intersperse some horizontals. I'm going to take my portraits and I'm going to like um, rearrange them a little bit so it's not so redundant. There's a lot of create. I should do a. I should do another video about this honestly because there's so much that goes into pairing for a blog post. But ultimately, that is the step. Uh, it takes a little bit of time, but once you're done with this, you're really over the hump of the hardest part of the work. All right, so you stomp these images, which resizes them, sharpens them, pairs vertical side by side, and then it strategically orders them, and now you're ready to upload. So. You can upload your images and have that going in the background and you can start writing your blog post in the back end of your blog. Um, you're going to want to have your featured image ready. So if you make a collage, this would be the time to make that collage image or you just pick one single portrait from the wedding day, maybe your best portrait to be your featured image for the post. You want to add a title and depending on how your blog is structured, maybe a subtitle. You want to customize your permalink, which is basically a great tool for SEO. You don't want to just put your client's names. You want to put a description of the day um, and, and good keywords that you want to rank for. Uh, and then once you do that, you can insert your images, add some captions and pick a category for your blog post to fall under. So if you're not overwhelmed yet, stick with me. Now we're getting to the part where you can publish it. And once you hit publish, you feel this sigh of relief and you know that not only did you get a jump start on your editing for this wedding, but you are fully marketing to the best of your ability. Like you are taking what you just shot and you're getting as much marketing power from it as you possibly can because people are still excited about it, which that leads me into my final step of sharing on social media. So when I do a blog post like this, I'm sharing on Instagram, I'm sharing on the feed, I'm sharing on stories, nowadays sharing on reels, like that's a, that should be a priority even though it's a little bit harder and takes more work. Um, do a Facebook post. I will post this on my personal Facebook page and my business Facebook page just to get as much traction as possible. And then I send an email to clients letting them know that their personalized special blog posts with the highlights are up. Now, this is huge for them because this is when they see their wedding day through my eyes. I do a same day slideshow the day of the wedding, but that's only 15 images and this is like 100. So this is a key moment. If you don't email your couple and you don't let them know the blog post is live and you're missing out on them sharing it with all their family and friends. So um, overall, is there a time frame when you need to do this? In my opinion, I don't honestly, I don't know the traffic of the internet. Like it used to be Tuesdays were a great traffic day back in the day. I don't really know what that day is anymore, but I do know that a Tuesday after a wedding is when people are still excited about it. They haven't forgotten about the celebration and the festivities of the weekend. Um, but they also have had time to reacclimate to daily life and they're going to be excited to relive what the, what happened this past weekend. So doing it on a Tuesday for me is great for my workflow, but it's also great for people to be excited about it still from the wedding that happened that weekend. So I like to post on Tuesdays, promote on Tuesdays and get the word out. And then I spend the rest of my week recovering from all the hard work. So a lot of photographers shoot a wedding on the weekend, then they recover. And then by the time Thursday and Friday come around, they're gearing up for another wedding and they already feel behind. This system, blogging a wedding so quickly, allows you to get ahead of your editing process and market fully with this brand new collection of beautiful images that you just shot. So. I love this stuff. If you can't tell, I love this stuff. And I think the reason I love it is because this is what catapulted me into growth when I first started my business. And while it looks different today, and it doesn't look like it used to back in 2008, 2010, it is still so beneficial. It's more beneficial on the side of workflow and SEO than it is engagement and getting tons of traffic to your blog. That's not the goal anymore. The goal for me is to crank out my workflow, to surprise my clients, to make them feel loved and to get my SEO out there as fast as possible and to have great content for social media. So when you start to combine the purpose of blogging into all the other things that you want to be actively pursuing, like, hey, I want to have Instagram content more readily. Well, if you have a very active blog calendar for everything you're shooting during your busy season, you automatically have a great social media calendar. So you just have to have a system and you need to avoid the bottlenecks. So I hope this was helpful. I know it's a lot of information. I know these are a lot of steps, but overall you can rewatch this as many times as you want and you can learn how to take blogging to the next level. If you have just been through blog posts together with no purpose and no system. My hope is that this YouTube video will allow you to have more strategic approach to the reason
reason why you're blogging and to allow you to do it more effectively and efficiently. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed that. Now, if you are wondering, gosh, you kind of skipped over the editing portion. I get that. There are some tips and some trainings available for you about consistent editing that are free. I would love for you to check those out. There's a link below. Um, there's a whole webinar that is dedicated to teaching photographers tips to how to edit consistently, how to get the same look and the same style over and over again in your work, no matter what you're shooting. So that is linked below. And I would encourage you to watch that if you're not quite ready to dive into the full KJ consistency course. The KJ consistency course is massive. It's huge. It's a lot of information. It's everything I know about the editing in Lightroom, everything I know about creating a workflow that that works and markets for your business. All of that is combined into one course, but it's an investment and it's a lot of time that you're gonna have to dig into like, okay, I'm gonna make my business better. I'm gonna watch this whole, whole course. I'm gonna dive into making this happen in my business. If you're not ready for that, the free webinar is where you should go. Both of these things, the consistency course and the free webinar are linked below. So you can go wherever you need for whatever season of life you are in, whatever season of business you're in, we have tools and resources for you. So I hope that's helpful. I am glad that you tuned in. If you enjoyed this, leave comments below. We try to check and answer comments every week. If you would love to see more content like this, um, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss anything in the future. Thanks for tuning in. Bye. Bye. See you next week. See you next week. Maybe. No, we will. We'll, no, we will. we'll be back. Oh, we will. Oh, we'll be back. We don't skip weeks. That's right. We're, we made a commitment. How many babies we have? It doesn't matter how many kids we have. We will not skip a week. <laughs> uh, we might skip a week. It's fine. Someday. Someday. <laughs>